Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this tutorial, uh, I want to show you how you can convert a mesh into a series of uh, voxels, something like that. As you can see here, we can control the number of divisions in the X, Y, and Z, and actually convert this mesh into these uh, series of boxes. I'm going to teach you how to do this step by step, so be sure to watch the video till the end. Okay, let's get started from scratch. What I want to do is to first bring this mesh inside the grasshopper canvas. So simply what I want to do is to go to the params menu and pick up the mesh component, uh, right click and set it to the mesh. After we bring the mesh inside, we can also right click and internalize it. If it's not going to change, uh, I'm going to do that so I can save the file for you. You can also download this from our website. Uh, okay, now what we want to do is to find the voxels. Uh, the algorithm is not really that hard. What we want to do is to first find the bounding box of this mesh, which you can just give a box to it from the params menu. You can also find it here. And then divide this box into a series of smaller box and test if they intersect with the mesh or not. Uh, to do that, First, we have to find the details of this box. I mean the, the X dimension, the Y dimension, and the Z dimension of this box. So what I want to do is to go to the uh, surface and deconstruct BREP, which is going to deconstruct this box into their faces, edges, and vertices. And what I want to do is to pick up the edges. So I'm going to go to the sets and use the list item to pick things. Remember that the list item is going to select things and we're going to select the edges. Uh, the first edge is obviously in the X direction. If I add it up because the index is zero, this is the first edge. The second edge is going to be the Y direction. Obviously, if you add this up, it's not going to give you what you want. So what I found is that if you go up here and add uh, which is like the end of the uh, data it's going to give you the z so by uh, deconstructing a brep and giving a list item to the edges and selecting the index zero index one and index minus one which is at the end of the list it's going to give you the z uh, to find the length of this i'm going to go to the params menu and use a number uh, and give it to the output because these are the lines as you can see here uh, I'm going to give this as the X use the shift key to add it here so X Y and Z now we have uh, X Y Z dimension and what we want to do is to divide this in, uh, on the number of boxes we need so I'm going to go to the math and use the division and use a number slider to divide it. So you can give number sliders or you can go to the params menu and in the utility use this gene pool, which is easier to use if you want to have a stack of number sliders. So just double click on it, say three number sliders because we have X, Y, and Z without decimals because we don't have like 2.5 div division of X. So it's not like that. And we say like division of one, to maybe 25. Just make this a little bit smaller and give that to the division. So that's going to divide the X, the Y and the Z. And now that it, we have the distance for the smaller cell size, we just have to make the box. So I'm going to go to the uh, surface and go to the primitive and make a domain box, as you can see here. Uh, the domain box is good because uh, it gives you the base of the plane of the box. And what we want to do here is, if I connect a curve from the params menu to the X here, is to pick the corner you want to uh, make the uh, cell unit. So I'm going to select the start and make the unit here. Okay, it's going to be something like that. And then we can make the X, uh, the Y and the Z numbers we need. So I'm going to go to the curve and pick up the end and start points. Obviously, if I connect a params menu point to the start, you can see that this is going to be the start. And if you give it to the base, it's going to be the X, Y uh, plane, which we need here. Okay, uh, the results of the division is like for the X, Y and Z. I'm going to go to the sets and pick up a list item and give it to the output and zoom in. So I say 0, 1, 2, which is like for the X, Y, and Z. And then I'm going to give it to the inputs. 
that is going to be the cell size. When you give the input number to the domain, it's going to be from zero to that number, and that is exactly what we need here. Uh, so remember that the division is going to change the cell size, and now when we have the cell size, we can just go to the transform and uh, go to the array and use a box array because we want to make a series of uh, boxes on each of other uh, stacked. Uh, so I'm going to say a box array. The geometry cell is going to be the box. Uh, the cell, which is the 3D bounding box, is going to also be the cell because we just want to uh, connect them together and so they tessellate. And number of x, y, and z is going to be this number slider. So another list item is going to go to the gene pool and pick up the number of x, y, and z. That is going to be the number of x, y, and z. And as you can see here, we can change the numbers easily, how many we want, and make the box. You can see that the cell is also the geometry we want to array, and that's exactly what we need. Okay, uh, now that we have the boxes, if you want to make it also faster, uh, what I prefer is mesh. So I'm going to go to the uh, mesh menu utility and use this simple mesh. Before we array it. I'm going to convert that box into a mesh. You can see this is going to be a mesh. This is going to be a nerves box. Uh, the nerves box, as you can see, each face has some UV curves, which you can deform or something like that, but we don't need that. It's a simple box, so mesh is okay, and we're going to give that to the geometry. That's going to make it faster. Uh, if you want to see how much it's going to consume uh, for the algorithm, just go to display uh, canvas widget, and profiler is going to show you here. And we just recompute so we can see that. Okay. As you can see here, we have a series of mesh boxes here and I'm going to go to the intersection and physical and use the collision one many because we want to uh, collide the mesh with the boxes we can use this collision one many uh, the obstacles and the collider so I'm going to give these boxes to the obstacles and the collider is going to be our base mesh And as you can see here, this is wrong because it just give uh, us one output. Uh, but the, uh, the thing we need here is like 630 uh, outputs. I mean, uh, we have to say, does this collide with it? So um, I think that the obstacles is going to be the boxes and the, uh, the boxes are going to go to collider and the base mesh is going to go to the obstacles. That's right, because as you can see here, we have 630 true and falses that says, does it collide or not? Uh, now you can simply just use a dispatch, set list, dispatch. That means, is it like can, uh, intersected or not? If you want to know more, you can also enroll in our course, powercourse.com, which we have complete section on data management. So I'm going to give that pattern of uh, true or false to the dispatch pattern. And the list I wanted to dispatch are the boxes. Just turn everything off and connect a mesh to the list A, which is true. And list B is going to be the false, it means it doesn't intersect. So we want the list A and that's it. Now you can see if I give a custom preview to that, and maybe some mesh edges so you can see the edges and now you can see I, by increasing the number of x y and z we can make a more detailed voxelize of the mesh by using this technique and we will have these as an output okay that was the tutorial of how you can convert a mesh uh, into a series of, of voxelized mesh, which is actually some boxes. And I think this is really useful if you want to uh, make this, especially for some building or 3D printing, it's going to be great. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, remember to like and subscribe to our channel and share with your friends and see you next time. Bye.